let's get started. It's, uh, it's about time. So welcome to Minute Madness, just the session that everyone is looking forward to, right? Um, so we have a, um, a great selection of uh, posters and demos for you today. And um, the format is slightly different than in the past. So each of the uh, fabulous folks that you see down there have either authored a poster or a demo. And uh, the uh, Minute Madness will happen in uh, two stages this year, which means every single presenter will get 60 seconds to advertise their work. Line up again, and we'll get an additional 30 seconds afterwards to uh, advertise their work in a different way, maybe. Um, the uh, posters and uh, demos are uh, set up outside, so uh, immediately following this session there will be a reception and there will be um, the, the opportunity to talk to the presenters to uh, read their uh, uh, posters and to experiment with their demos and ask them a ton of questions. So the, um, we will have a, an award uh, for the best poster or best demo, so we don't discriminate between demo and poster there, whichever one is best is best, and uh, this will be determined by popular vote. So you, as the audience, you have the power to vote uh, for your favorite poster or demo. The way this works is each and every single poster or demo has uh, what I call a scorecard attached to it. It looks like this. Uh, you see the, an identifier on there, P1 through P20, I believe, for poster 1 through 20, and D1 through D3 for the demo, and the title. So those sheets of papers are attached to every single poster outside or demo. And before leaving this room, everyone will get uh, three little uh, three little colored stickers like this, right? And so you take those stickers and you glue them onto the scorecard for your favorite poster or demo. Well, you can do this several different ways, right? If you only have one favorite uh, poster, for example, you put all three on one. If you have three, four favorites, you put one of each of them. If you have two favorites, you put two, uh, two stickers on one and three sticker, uh, one sticker on the other. If you have no favorites, and you can sell them to the highest bidder, uh, whatever <laughs> fancy vote. So everyone gets three votes. Uh, the color is insignificant. The uh, um, the quantity counts, right? So uh, I'll ask one of the uh, volunteers, student volunteers, to have this uh, earn here with the with the stickers at the exit. So come see, go see them. Grab one, I'll trust you that you grab one only, and uh, so you, you make your voice heard, okay? Alright, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, as usual with the Minute Madness, we're really strict about timing, so I'll take the time after exactly 60, 60 seconds, I'll ring a bell, and I thought it would be very fitting if I got some swag from UT. So this is, I don't know what it is, but it makes noise. And it's UT branded, uh, so that's the sound that you'll hear indicating that you're 60 seconds off. If you don't respond to that, I can my PA and kick you off personally. <laughs> so, the, uh, let's get it down there. Uh, so the, uh, the speakers have their own microphone, they hand it over to the next speaker, so this will all run over. And uh, uh, every single speaker advances the slides on himself, so that should, should all work out. Okay? Uh, well, give me one second to set me up there, and then you can go. Now I'm 
Evet. Uh, my name is Matt Kelly, I'm from Old Dominion University, and if you were here last year, you recall our tool called Make. Uh, it was a browser extension, but this one is a mobile application that attempts to uh, resolve the issue of a lot of the mobile web not being preserved. Um, so what it, does, what it does, if you have an Android device, is whenever you're browsing a web page from your native browser, you would hit the share button, and from that you can view all the mementos of that page that you're viewing on your mobile as preserved uh, in the archives. And what it does, it allows you to, instead of viewing um, the archives from, uh, that would normally be preserved from the desktop context, uh, you instead uh, have the, uh, the mementos uh, distinguished between those that are captured of the mobile site, uh, in addition to showing the ones that are captured from the desktop perspective, and kind of links those in one way. Uh, and so the, you can currently uh, install it, and if you can buy it, I'll give you a little bit of demo. And how much time do I have left? Five. Five seconds? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll seek my time. <laughs> from Japan. Uh, my research is related to co-citation search. Uh, as you know, uh, co-citation is a linkage between two documents cited by another document. Uh, this linkage identifies document relationships that are undetectable by what is search. Uh, my past work ex uh, extended this traditional co-citation searching uh, by incorporating <coughs> the technologies of big data, uh, such as uh, machine learning documents and uh, high-speed machines. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the uh, extended process of search uh, has uh, spread uh, relationships and uh, parting citation points and based on graph theory. The purpose of this research is evaluating combination search, word based search, and uh, extended process of search. Thank you. Can you stay there for 10 more seconds? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
so. Well, we did a case study on the W, uh, the, the Wisconsin Public Library Consortium, and we found that uh, we could calculate uh, basically a reading reduction time based on the number of available copies, or the average number of available copies in the days until a title was available. Uh, and um, what we found was that though our sample was not significant, this has potential to reduce wait time in digital libraries and reduce the cost of e-materials for libraries. Hello everyone, I am Mayank Singh and I am from IIT Kharagpur, India. So, in this work we propose a conflict resolution platform conferences for assisting the categorization of computer science conferences. So, in this work actually we try to answer a very pertinent and a debatable question among the researchers that whether a particular conference is a top tier or not. So, we, ha we have done a, a like, we have done lot of feature analysis and uh, some prediction also so please do come to my poster for a detailed analysis and results thank you yeah, I, I am Anderson. I'm from Brazil and I will present the poster combined classifier and the use of feedback for the way of the names the proposed method is very interesting because although uh, we use a supervised classifier, the training examples are automatically created. Uh, we propose uh, a simple but uh, effect, efficient manner to combine classifier uh, to <coughs> produce a similarity function using the disambiguation Yes. We automatically determine the threshold values and the only user effort is to provide feedback but with low feedback our method uh, yeah. I'm from Lisbon, the University of Lisbon. Uh, I came here to present a pragmatic risk assessment method. Our, what we realize is that risk assessment is a very costly way, uh, it's very <coughs> costly, and uh, it involves uh, spending lots of resources. So we want to pre so we present here a method that can be, that can be used to pragmatically uh, perform risk assessment uh, in digital operation. For that, we provide a business model canvas uh, based on OIIS that then can be adapt adapted to, to your specific um, to your specific institution. Then, based on based on that canvas, you can you can identify your risks and using a tool uh, named Holy Risk, an online tool, you can find the controls, find the controls for those risks, and then uh, even um, assess the costs of performing those controls. Uh, that's it. So my name is Luis Menezes, I'm from Texas A&M University. And uh, our work uh, examines a uh, user study where uh, there's a general assumption that uh, uh, repositories which are uh, more institutional are more resilient to change. However, we found this was not the case. And uh, so we carried a user study about how conference sites degrade over time. So again, my name is Luis Menezes and come see my question. Right, uh, I'm Adil Kapsa from Penn State, and uh, my poster is about automatically generating concept, graph, uh, concept hierarchy using graph. So, really, a concept uh, hierarchy is something similar to this. Let's say you want to build uh, some kind of taxonomy or hierarchy for computer science. You know, there's operating systems, algorithms under it, and probably graph algorithms are underneath. And really, the goal, you want to be able to build this automatically. So, our approach starts by getting data from a large uh, digital library. Uh, we process it and extract key terms that are going to be candidates to be part of the taxonomy. And 
After that, we're going to be extracting the relations such that we know that OS is under computer science. When the user supplies a query to be to build a taxonomy for it to apply graph partitioning, and the result is a taxonomy like this. Hi, I'm uh, Jacob Jett from the University of Illinois in Urbana Champaign, and I'm here to present a poster on a, an analysis of uh, an anime recommendation service. And I suppose a little audience participation is in order. Does everyone know what anime is? Oh, that's a pretty good amount of people. Very good. Um, so, what we looked at in particular was uh, how people are asking for anime <laughs> recommendations. Um, using the natural text, and we're mining this to try and figure out how we can improve uh, the way we describe anime. You have 10 seconds left. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, uh, DPLA Europeana want to be one-stop shop directories for finding cultural heritage materials. But it's very, very difficult to find context for the items, which is essential for conducting any kind of scholarship. So we are trying to create context, automatically generating it from item-level metadata. And the idea is to fix so that you can find things from millions of items, from hundreds of thousands of institutions, more in the next 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Hamid Fawad from Virginia Tech University. So, uh, my course is reading between the lines a machine learning approach for simulating the geo education of tweets. So, uh, basically, users use tweets as a reporting tool. So uh, in 2014, we have uh, 250,000 complaints about the pot, uh, potholes in the street. So uh, as a researcher, when we get this data, how to uh, automatically get the location of these potholes. So users use the, the context or implicit information. So I have foothold in uh, Locust Street, but where is Locust Street? We have around uh, 500 green fields in the US. So if you just mention that, where, which state it is in, so we build automatic uh, machine learning approach to uh, uh, detect that. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Daniel Harris from the University of Kentucky. I took the Michael Bay approach to making PowerPoint slides uh, by adding some explosions. But I'm going to be talking about modeling faceted browsing systems. <coughs> and. So faceted browsing systems typically consist of some type of taxonomy plus some kind of interaction from the user. And I am an amateur mathematician in my, in my background, so I want to use category theory, which maybe in part two I'll explain why that's totally appropriate, but it might sound strange. But uh, the ultimate goal is for interoperability and reuse. So basically, the kind of how these systems are built, people build a system, they talk about their model and their implementation, and this is kind of a way to take all those different kinds of models and kind of unify them. Hey, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Ahmed Osson. I am a web paleontologist, a paleontologist at Stanford University Library. And my work is to dig into the computers and old computers, hard disk CDs, and try to find the old web pages that remain over there for, for decades. Uh, our last discovery was a backup copy of what's known the first US, first website in, in North America and the US, they back to 1991. Our goal was how to make it browsable, work to reconstruct this website and make it browsable and workable uh, again. Uh, this is just an example of what we found, this is what we consider the first under construction page is world since it's again as it zone begins. In this poster I will explain the process and techniques that we use to uh, to, to reach our goal. Can I hear the bell? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, hi, I'm Drew Gordon from New York University. Uh, and researchers who study uh, human behavior uh, make abundant use of video uh, in their research. And so any two researchers that sit down with the same video clip can gain uh, two different conclusions from that same clip, which makes it highly viable for sharing and reusing. But video data are large, they're, extent, uh, they're expensive to store, uh, and there's ethical challenges to sharing them, so it's very difficult for them to share this video data. Uh, Databrary is a platform, an online digital library, that allows these researchers to upload, uh, describe, annotate, and provide access to these video data for other researchers in the same domain. Uh, we provide the uh, user interfaces uh, to allow them to do this seamlessly, to allow them to do this in a way that makes sense to them, and we provide them access restrictions that allow them to share it with others in a way that's comfortable for them. Uh, so this allows this kind of sharing to happen uh, in a capacity and a scale that uh, has been unimaginable previously. Hello, Karen Hudson, Politico. Um, so what does the modern scholarly publication look like? Um, it might look something like this, and uh, this is distorted, but if you don't have to read the whole thing, basically the point is um, the article is still there, but it doesn't stand alone anymore. Um, you might have a data set and something like Figshare, if you're lucky, you may have um, code in a, a GitHub, and there may be a software developer that wasn't the author of the article. So all of these are important to the context, um, but if you uh, submit an article, there's no real easy way to capture this. So I'm working on a project called RMAP, um, which is about capturing these maps. Um, it's a Sloan Foundation public project with the goal of building a prototype to capture and preserve these and how to be on the part two. My name is Arthur, I'm going to present my project uh, Why People Express Way. Or... So the idea is uh, this project was developed at CERN and EPFL, and most of the content that it's at CERN is, um, has lots of mathematical content, but you are, uh, there is no possibility of querying by typing some mathematical equations, so that's what was the aim of my project. Uh, we, how do we do this? We have the input equation in LaTeX, we translate it to some Visible um, format, and we extract some features, structural and notational, and then we use a typical search engine like Solar, and which allows us to retrieve documents that talk about this equation. Thanks. All right. So um, this is just a small snapshot of the uh, system architecture. Uh, generally. Uh, the public is connected to, the, this is the uh, web service, and this is all the infrastructure that we have in place, uh, which makes it uh, plug pluggable into any uh, you know, website infrastructure, and you can find out more details when you come to the Thank you. Hello, I'm Hi, uh, we did the uh, mobile app that allows you to view the uh, mobile captured instances and stuff. And, and, um, in addition to this, it has an initial, uh, it has a, the functionality of also being able to say its name. So if you click on a certain button in the app, you hear mink, 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 <laughs> uh, this is my poster. Um, uh, the poster is made of non-web public, uh, so uh, uh, I, I can bring it, uh, I could bring it in my bag, uh, it can be folded, but uh, it does not have a uh, noticeable uh, glitches. Uh, feel free to come and touch it. <laughs> Do not need to 
up uh, my previous uh, presentation. I want to uh, conclude on the, uh, about the work I'm uh, presenting. Uh, document uh, classification is an important research uh, topic and uh, that has been done over and over, but it's also uh, important to provide for users what they want from what they see. Thank you. If you don't want to wait up to 66 days for a popular ebook title, you might want to come look at my poster and possibly chat with me about that. <laughs> yeah. So, if you replace the word "be" it with uh, "JCDL," then this question becomes very relevant. Like, is JCDL a top-tier content? So, to get an answer, please visit my poster. Again. Uh, the, the only user effort is to provide the feedback, but with a low effort, our method outperforms our feedback based methods. Thank you. So, to give you a bit more context, this, uh, this work was performed in the the context of the forcing project uh, developed uh, by the European Commission, which focused on clarifying the cost of this package, and it can be used for other, for you, identifying the risks in your controls. Uh, please visit me, and I can take uh, all your doubts and talk about this work. So, 30 more seconds. So, uh, what can I say? So, uh, we found that uh, we could identify nine categories that relate how web pages from conference degrade until they're actually <coughs> So again, my name is Luis Menezes and come see my post. Alright, uh, so if you'd like to see how a taxonomy like this is built using any root uh, term that you want, please come see me and my poster. And also I'll give you another reason. You'll be distributing bar tickets. If you want to win <laughs> one of my two bar tickets, come see my poster. So uh, round two. Um, so our poster is gonna kind of go into yes. Uh, how how can we match up these types of things to the metadata we're already using to describe anime? Um, so uh, if that's not interesting enough, I hope you'll come by and kind of talk with me. That way you know what the hell our paper that proposes some solutions for it we'll talk about next year. Pretty picture, huh? <laughs> so, that's our flexible architecture for creating context for BPLA data. And Rick Furuda, who's sitting there in the back, is going to be the best offer you get for your words. which has uh, latitude and longitude, and if you use name data recognition to get the location information, you get ambiguous location information. So we build the machine learning approach to disambiguate this location information and get the ad, uh, accurate uh, result, address result. So if you are interested to know how the machine learning approach works, come see the, my poster. Thank you. Okay, so a brief comment on the category theory. So category theory is an abstract branch of mathematics that represents things as objects and relationships, which nice constraints upon those uh, relationships and makes things interesting. And if you come by, I'll talk to you about why it makes sense that fast browsing and interactive systems can evolve that way. So thank you. In case you forgot what I said last time, we are working and reconstructing the first website in the US. And here is the, I'm showing the evolution of the homepage since it started as little baby, just a few lines. 
start to add more text as this is important for some people. They start to add images and links until it reaches the, the, uh, the grown up right now in 2015. See you at Muslim Eat Web. Also, uh, researchers are loath to gather up and describe their own data after they've completed a study. So we provide them an active workspace so they can upload and manage their data as they collect it in the lab. Uh, these are based on tools that they're used to using already, so again, it makes it seamless. And finally, this provides the added benefit of standardizing metadata for a domain that is largely characterized by uh, diverse data management practices. So you saw that we have this map of things and no real place to store them. So um, our map aims to store these as linked data graphs. And we're calling these graphs DISCLs, short for um, distribu Distributed Scholarly Compound Objects. Um, so if you want to see one of those in action and come find out more about the project, uh, we'll go demo. So there are two types of features that we how we explain uh, our equations, but uh, to learn more, I will invite you to the demo, demo trick. All right, um, that was Minute Madness and a Half. Um, please don't forget to vote. You get these uh, little uh, uh, traffic light uh, shaped uh, stickers. For the volunteers, where did you go? Outside, right, perfect. So get your sticker, uh, um, vote for your favorite uh, poster and paper and uh, uh, demo, rather, and uh, enjoy a drink and a dog. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go.